China, China's had one of the biggest credit booms in modern history. And historically, credit booms of that size, which happen that quickly, they all result in financial crises. So the question is, is China different this time? Uh, and our view is that it probably isn't. Now, why should it be now that they come to the end of this credit boom, apart from the fact that it's been very rapid and it's gone on a long time? I think the answer is that the Fed have been tightening up dollar liquidity. And ultimately, China's financial system is dollarized. So you tighten up dollar liquidity, you tighten up China's financial system. And the key here is that China haven't been stimulating enough domestically to offset that tightening. They haven't done enough reserve requirement ratio cuts. And so our models suggest that credit growth should continue to slow. It's accelerated recently, but the next leg is, is down. And that would suggest that Xi Jinping uh, and this person of authority and, and, and the people on his side who want to move away from a credit-fueled economy and who want to implement structural reform, it looks like on, on that analysis that they're in charge. Uh, and of course, if China's credit growth slows, then uh, that undermines the growth model. It means the construction cycle is undermined. Uh, it, it means that investment spending is undermined. And, uh, and of course, that will result in ongoing downward pressure on China's economy. And what's the natural release valve? It's letting the currency go. So I think pressure builds on, on, on China's currency as they continue to move towards a, a different type of growth model. And that's a deflationary shock for the global economy. It's negative for uh, other Asian currencies. It's negative for uh, commodities. It's a big hit to Germany and parts of Europe. It's a big hit to global tri trade, all coming at a time, of course, when the Fed uh, are tightening monetary policy. And with that, it's a hit to the Australian economy, which is ultimately a play on China and other emerging markets. Australia's economic cycle has been prolonged by capital inflows, a uh, rising, rising house price, um, or building house price bubble, uh, rise in, a very sharp rise in household indebtedness, um, and that is likely to begin to unwind um, as, as China's uh, hard landing, if you like, uh, and becomes more obvious.